Hey everyone, it's uh, me, Matsmus. Today is uh, probably the worst day I've ever had on this platform with YouTube. You know, I've had a lot of instances where things go wrong, don't work out, um, and go get through it. You know, YouTube is a horrible beast sometimes, and you've just got to accept the punches that get given to you. But today's punch has uh, literally just put me to the floor. Um... Now, I know you've all come to see a Challenger 2 video, and trust me, it's coming. It's coming at the end of this, uh, I guess, spiel. Um, and I don't want this to come across as a rant, but I, I thought I'd get it off my chest, because it is important. Of course, it's integral to the entire basis of this channel. YouTube has decided to completely demonetize my channel. Now, many of you out there are probably like, big deal, Matmus, you know, you've got a job, etc., and you never really had much interest in, in, in money for your channel or whatever else it may be, and you know what? This is not what I'm here to do. I'm not here to make money. That's pretty much always been the ethos of me and my channel, is I'm not here to, to make money off advertising. 90% of the time, uh, my videos are demonetized anyway for not copyrights, but for uh, content that is military-related or they just don't like. And YouTube announced to me today that they have removed my monetization due to the fact that I have been reusing content. Now, I am not a lawyer, and I am not an expert at copyright content and fair use laws, etc, etc. I'm not, and I'm not going to pretend that I am. My channel is primarily, and used to be, um, a gaming channel. That's what it started off as. We did a lot of gaming, and it, you know, it didn't really progress as well as I hoped, and I kind of looked into other avenues, into the military equipment reviews, which I know nearly 80 to 90% of you of the channel that watch it love it. Um, and to do so, I have to use and find footage of vehicles or equipment or weapons that, uh, you know, you guys can see as reference. That's the reason I use that footage, and it, for pretty much most part, it's all used for educational purposes to inform you and to give you some guidance as to what these kind of bits of equipment and things do. That's really always been my basis. It's never to show you about these vehicles and then take all your money. Um, that's not what I'm here for. YouTube has basically told me that, hey, guess what? We think that a lot of your videos and your channel is using other people's stuff um, and we're going to remove all the money from your channel, even the stuff that you've just earned. Um, everything that you've done is going to be taken away. Uh, you are to basically go through your entire channel and purge everything that you find that is of reuse, which of course is absolutely ridiculous because I have no specifics as to what they define as reuse. Now, fair use laws are absolutely crazy, and it's almost impossible for me to try and define what I can and cannot use. In reality, YouTube is basically telling me to delete 90% of my channel. Of course, with that being said, I, I truly don't want to do that. I've tried my best to sift through the channel and delete things that may have come across as not being fair use and not being portrayed in a, you know, method that I'm basically discussing and putting my own narrative to a video that kind of gets away from trying to actually steal someone's content. Nearly all the time I try my best to approach people's content and ask them if I can use it and I don't use content that I am not allowed to use. And if I do use content that I haven't asked the people for use, it's in a context that I can narrate or put a different dynamic to it that it's my own content. And I'm just broken right now. Um, YouTube has basically also said that I'm not allowed to appeal. Uh, I've given, been given no avenue to appeal to them. Basically, even when I go to the help page or the contact uh, help support, they don't even give me the option to email or, or, or text chat them. I've lost all my rights. So I'm not even a um, verified or certified YouTube um, partner anymore. They've taken my partnership away. Now, they have given me a 30-day period to basically sort my stuff out. Um, which I'm trying to figure out, which is very difficult for me right now. I'm deleting footage and videos that have taken hours and hours, if not days, weeks, months of, of, of work um, to try and create. And I'm hoping that, that the videos that are being removed, because you can't just put them on private, they have to be removed, are going to allow them to see another side to my channel and think, actually, maybe he is trying to um, follow our guidelines, which, to be honest, I've always thought I have. Um, there's been individuals who have put strikes against my channel, and I'll give them that, you know, if they didn't want their channel um, or their content being used, and that's fine. And I've tried my best to stay within the boundaries that allow me to use content within the fair use laws. And, you know, it's so subjective, it's almost impossible to define what you can and cannot use. 
So folks, I, I am absolutely devastated. Um, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do from here forth. I do have the 30 days to wait. Um, you're probably all wondering, why are you so devastated? It's just money. And it's it's not just the money, folks. This is a huge hit to my channel and the progress that I've made. Um, I'm having to remove content that I've worked so hard on. Hours and hours and hours of work uh, and dedication to make content that I hoped would be there for entertainment or educational purposes. And clearly YouTube does not see the same basis as I do. So I'm hoping that in 30 days time that uh, my channel will be able to not only be demonetized but I'll actually be a content creator partnership with them again because I'd lose a lot of features and an ability to showcase my channel. It's basically getting put on, it's been kicked out the front door in the snowy weather in you know minus 40 weather and said deal with it come back in 30 days and hopefully your purgatory will be fixed by then and we will maybe have a conversation whether we want to continue on or not. I am just completely baffled. Um, it completely took me off guard. My channel means a lot to me, folks. I can't explain to you how much I love entertaining you guys and having fun with you all as a community. You're amazing. Amazing? Amazing? That's not a word. An amazing bunch of people. Um, I've hopefully appealed and, and come across in such a way that, you know, I've been able to influence something upon you, whether it be just wanting to join the military or just trying to cheer up or have a good day or whatever it may be. Um, there is one video that I will absolutely refuse to remove from my channel, and that is that of um, uh, Gunny. Um, I'm not going to remove that video. Uh, it does have a content um, copyright on it, but it's not. It's there to get the, the money that goes from that video goes to the owner of the original video, which is a film corporation, of course. It's from the Full Metal Jacket movie. I will not remove that out of pure respect for Gunny. I will not remove my own ethical decision, my own morals for YouTube. I will refuse to do it. Um, I will not remove that video, so that's staying up. Um, but a lot of videos you may not see anymore on my channel. I apologize. I'm really sorry that this has had to happen. Anyway, folks, I'm not going to take any more of your time. I appreciate every single one of you and your support going through this tough time. And hopefully, maybe YouTube will give me a second chance to move on in the future. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And, uh, you know, I probably am going to go a little quiet for a while. So all the best. Take care and bye bye. Hello everyone, it is me, Matt Smith, and thank you once again for joining me on today's video. We are discussing the Challenger 2 main battle tank from the British Armed Forces, and today I have some outstanding news that is really going to put some new light onto this main battle tank's future, and what we're going to see potentially coming up soon. Now, the Challenger 2 is definitely my favourite tank in the world. You may ask why, well I've served alongside of it, repairing it, fixing it, recovering it, and I have a lot of pride and respect for it as a tank, and many people out there do too. It is definitely a vehicle that requires a little bit of tender love. It's been left in the dark for quite a few years, and only as of recently, within the last probably 10 years or so, have we seen some major developments into trying to get this tank updated to the more modern standards of other NATO tanks out there. Now, Smoothbore has often been talked about for the Challenger 2 for quite some time. However, the cost of replacing the turret to accommodate the longer rounds has always been the reason it's not really been done. The Ministry of Defence has always balanced the price of two-piece rounds against the cost of a new turret. One of the reasons for adopting the two-piece ammo was that the Hesh rounds were at the time available and extremely cheap. Now this is just a huge assumption here, but the cost of buying two-piece ammunition has escalated probably to some sort of point that the costs of a new turret are potentially a little bit more acceptable. Now I want to make something very clear before I go any further in the video. I am not a subject matter expert, I'm not a tanker of a Challenger 2, but I do love this tank and I love to research about it. So if anything in this video is incorrect, please call me out for it and correct me, because I want to make sure I'm giving you the most informed information about this tank as possible. Now the main reason the gun followed the suit from the Challenger 1 to the Challenger 2 was that the UK had the large stocks of 120mm rifle guns already existing for the Challenger 1 and the Chieftain. In post-Cold War drawdown, getting new ammo types in just wasn't really considered the best use of money. 
and to be honest they were kind of right. Now the Hesh round or High Explosive Squash Head is a fantastic dual purpose round, useful against legacy armour at extreme ranges and devastating against lightly armoured targets and probably one of the best rounds for knocking out structures or buildings. However it does have its limitations and of course just doesn't really work with the smoothbore guns. Now this video is not here to focus on the pros and cons of the smoothbore guns to the rifle debate because we could go on about that all day long, but it does touch a little bit onto the news that I'm about to share with you. Now if you're a tank fanatic like me you will notice that the Challenger 2 is in the news a lot lately with all sorts of rumours, speculation, concepts and ideas being proposed for this tank's future. Of course, most of you should have seen the recent video I discussed on the Challenger 2 with the new high-tech and impressive Black Knight system that was proposed for the tank recently. Basically a defensive suite that protects the vehicle from any kind of indirect fire and smoke screens and the such. Of course, I did do a video on that, so feel free to go click on the description box and find that link to go see it. There's also been the recent Street Fighter program, which the Royal Tank Regiment of the British Army has been looking at implementing for their own purposes and ideas. Basically, they were given a money grant to say, okay, here's your tank, play with it, I want you to put all the bits and pieces that you think would help you do your job and we'll see what we can do with it. And that's exactly what they did, and actually some of the equipment they put on it and some of the ideas were Challenger pretty cool. Tank pimped up to become Street Fighter. A unique project where personnel from the Royal Tank Regiment were asked what changes they'd make to a Challenger, and the ideas were then implemented. Lieutenant Tom Quant is a Challenger 2 troop leader and talks us through some of them. So here we've got barrel mounted cameras that enable the tank to look around corners without exposing it. We've also got hull mounted cameras which feed into a screen at the back enabling infantry dismounted behind us to see everything that we can see up front. On the roof we've got a 360 degree HD camera that eliminates all blind spots and provides total all round situational awareness to the turret crew inside. On the bass plates here, we've got ladders, which we can carry for the infantry, and we've got bass plate steps, enabling them to mount the vehicle and go in through lower ground floor windows. We've modified the stowage units on the back, which enable the infantry to stow away ammunition, medical supplies, radios, etc. This is the screen I was talking about, into which all the camera systems are feeding and it means the infantry back here can see everything that we can see up from. Um, some very wise decisions made by the tank crews, however I'm not too sure about the suitability for actual operational deployment. Some of the cameras and concepts really, to me, felt like they could snap off, break off, get covered in dust extremely quickly. And even if you're using something like a GoPro, when you're firing 120mm of metal down a barrel, recoil really does take its effect on electronic products on the end of the barrel. But for today, the buzz is around the Challenger 2 for a completely new reason, an exciting reason. The heavyweight monster of the British Army is supposedly, wait for it, being proposed to now incorporate an entirely new turret design. And here it is. This is a picture of the backdrop at Rheinmetall's display at the International Armoured Vehicles Conference in London. Of course, the keen-eyed amongst you will probably have already noticed that the Challenger 2 hull is matched with a rather sexy looking turret, which most importantly is hosting a new gun. And as you can see, there is a distinct lack of that fine British rifling that we've all come to love and hate, depending on your opinion, on the end of it. This raises some serious excitement for tank fans and Challenger 2 lovers such as I. But most of all, it opens up a whole host of important questions. Firstly, why now? Why did it take so long to get into the stage where the United Kingdom wanted a new gun for their main battle tank? Well this is something we'll need to wait out and hear more on, but many suggest it's because of the need to standardise ammunition in potential conflict zones working with other NATO tanks. But another large part of it is that the rifled gun really has seen its day in modern tank battle. That's not saying that the rifled version is not as effective, but it does have its limitations and the cause for concern when it comes to the logistics and ammunition supply to these tanks. And as most of you are well aware, in battle supply and logistics are absolutely crucial if you wish for your battle groups to win the fight in the long term. Overall though, this is absolutely amazing news for this main battle tank. It shows that the British Army realises that the tank needs some help to keep up with the modern times. We've seen other life extension programs or LEPs come into play in the past and also it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that the tank really is outdated to some extent and some of the more sophisticated upgrade packages out there for other tanks worldwide 
are pretty much putting this down into the bottom tier of tanks out there. Now, this new turret and gun from what we know is the 120mm smoothbore RH120 L55A1 gun. It's said that the ammunition is stored in the rear of the turret bustle, probably isolated with blow-off panels, the same kind of system which the Abrams crews uses to protect its own vehicle. The turret, as far as we know, is a completely new turret, made of welded rolled plates and probably some new modular armor special attachments put on top of it. The UK, though, will definitely want a similar round to the Hesh round or high explosive squash head, and may even consider moving up from the 120mm, wait for it, to the 130mm gun, which has also been in many discussions through NATO, in particular with that of the Leopard 2 tank. My only complaint with this is if the tank is getting a new gun, it would make much more sense to invest and focus on the 130mm than the 120 If other NATO standard countries are looking into potentially upgrading their tanks, I would really hope we get on the same bandwagon as them to allow them to not only fulfill their standardization role, but to put another 10mm of punch through armor that is out there today. What's confusing, though, is the fact that BAE and Rheinmetall are having a joint venture with this. However, BAE showed off the Black Knight Demonstrator a few months ago, and we have not really seen anything to do with Rheinmetall. To go deeper into the procurement process, BAE Systems had agreed to hand the control of the armoured vehicle section to the business to its German rival Rheinmetall in a $45 million deal. The agreement gave the Rheinmetall UK operations a 55% controlling stake in BAE's British Land Systems divisions. Rheinmetall's acquisition of the holding in Telford is expected to secure many jobs, which is good for British industry. Ironically, the division is supposedly going to be called Rheinmetall BAE Systems Land. Kind of strange that two major competitors are going to have pretty much the same sort of name. The boring stuff aside though, we can finally say that the Challenger 2 is potentially going to get the makeover it deserves. Two-part ammunition will be a thing of the past, and we may even be seeing two packages combined to make a main battle tank worthy of operational deployment that I would safely say brings it back into the competitive edge on the battlefield today. The power pack, or the engine as you may know it, is something I have always known very well, and being that I repaired them for the most part, I have to say it concerns me that so much work is being done on the tank itself, but no major changes for the power pack. Yet. There are plans in the work to have the tank's power pack upgraded to a 1600 horsepower engine boosted from the already fairly impressive 1200 horsepower diesel engine currently powering it. To me, this is one of the biggest and if not most important changes other than the gun and the turret. Overall though, I am very excited for the future of Challenger 2 main battle tanks. Some may say that all these major upgrades such as the turret, gun, power pack, defense systems, crew stations, is it applicable to call it still the Challenger 2? I'll let you be the judge of that. Folks, I hope you enjoyed today's video and learned a little bit about what is upcoming with this tank, and I can't wait to hear more news in the future. Let's hope this isn't all just, you know, the wall being pulled over our eyes, and you never know, these things may not ever be installed on the tank, and we just sort of sit in, you know, the grey zone, but I doubt it. I think they're going to bring this tank up to full specification with these kind of packages in the near future, and I can't wait to see them trundling around on exercises or deployments in the future with these kind of new systems in place. Let's see if the 120mm smoothbore gun is going to be placed finally onto the Challenger 2 in the near future. Thanks again for watching everyone. If you did enjoy today's video, please leave me a like and a comment, and if I did make any mistakes, once again, please correct me in the comment section. If you want to follow my channel, of course, hit the bell button by the subscribe button to be notified of any upcoming videos. I do also have my merchandise store, which if you want to go check out, you're more than welcome to. And I do have my Discord channel if you just want to come hang out, play some games, have a chat, etc, etc. I also have my Patreon account, which is really, really appreciative from people who have been donating to there recently. I can't thank you enough, guys. Really, it means so much to me. And uh, if you do wish to donate towards my Patreon page, please check the description box below, which has pretty much every other social media or account description and link in there also. Have a wonderful day, and everyone. All the best. Bye-bye.